Richard Hammond, and welcome to my last lap. <laughs> The weirdest dream, because I was up late last night working on my new gnome cloning device, and I'm not sure it's working properly, and they've sort of invaded my mind. It's terrifying. Anyway, this lab, it is a wonderful place, considered by some say it's the, the scientific hub of the world. Others say it's the best lab in the world. And it's not just my mum and dad saying nice things about the place, though it is mainly just my mum and dad. Today, two lucky teams of scientists have been invited into the lab to take part in experiments that might win them some amazing prizes. Coming up, FactNav 2.0 with Oliver. <laughs> in mini science, things get a bit sticky for my lab rats. <laughs> my lab rats organise a battle of the elements with the help of a high-pressure water cannon and a massive industrial wind machine. Let's just say Mother Nature will not be happy. <laughs> and this week's Messy Messy Mess Test is everyone's favourite Gungie-related bungee-powered catapult game. It's the Gungie Bungie! <laughs> so, who would be the best person in the world to protect this lab? Well, it would probably be Vin Diesel, but the next best option would be this lady. It is Ninja Nan! <laughs> She's surrounded by them! There's millions of them! Oh, they're stalking her. Nan, wake her. Best not to wake her. Right, let's have a look at who's trying to get into my lab today. Hello! Hello! Right, yeah, you look like you could be the red team, but we have to make sure. So, for security reasons, your names, please. Callum, Izzy, Lisa. Yep, that's what I've got written down on your file. Um, under talent, who's going to do what for, for us? To prove you are who you say you are? Me. Lisa, what are you going to do? I can turn my feet inside out and still walk. Ooh, good grief. OK, fair enough, you can. I believe you're coming into the lab. <laughs> no, I just tried it. It is impossible, Lisa. It's just you can do that. You can come to here, but that's as far as you can go into the lab because Ninja Nan is watching you three just to make sure, one final security check before we let you into the, the lab, OK? And that is, we agreed a password with the red team. If you are the red team, you'd know what it is. What is the password? Toilet. That's what I've got written down. Why is it toilet? Is because, it, is that because you're... On my school residential trip, um, I sleptwalked and I was found on the toilet at 2 o'clock in the morning. You sleepwalked into the lavatory? Well... Convenient, I suppose. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, I believe you then. You are the red team. You're cleared through security. Go and get settled in, ready for the first game. <laughs> That's your red team. Now we need a yellow team. Let's meet the bunch of people who say it's them. <laughs> That's gnomes! There were gnomes just then! There were gnomes in the lab! OK. OK, well, 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 you do now look like the yellow team. Um, so we need to check for security reasons. Your names, please. You are? Holly, Lucy, John. Holly, Lucy and John. Yep, fair enough. What hidden talent are you going to demonstrate to prove you are the yellow team? I can do a headstand. John, OK, go on then. Yep. Oh, fair enough. Yep, you are standing on your head. I believe you're coming into the lab. Come on. <laughs> All right, um, before we can be absolutely sure you are the real yellow team, we agreed a password with the real yellow team, which you would know if you are they and not gnomes. So, what do you think it is? Pig, pig. Yes, that's what I've got written down here on your security file. Why pig? I went to my uncle's farm and I opened a pig shed and the pig came rushing out and, it, and I fell on the floor at charm. What, you got run over by yeah. a pig? Wow! Was it a specially trained attack pig? Yeah. We tried one of those in the lab ones. It didn't work out well. All right, I believe you. You are the yellow team. Go and get settled in, ready for the first game. <laughs> OK, we have our two teams. And for the next round, I need the help of a clever car. He knows a lot about the Big Bang, and that's not just the one that comes from his exhaust when you're starting. Please welcome Oliver! <laughs> Into 
back to nav and hooked up. System yeah, up and running. You're good. Now, in order to keep Oliver absolutely up to the minute, I've fitted him with the very latest upgrade, FACNAV 2.0. Unfortunately, the copy I bought was in the bargain bin at my local gadget shop because some of the parts were missing. And it turns out that the missing parts were probably quite important because, as a result, not all of the facts he has in the system are entirely factual. They're completely incorrect, in fact. Teams, that's where you come in. I need you to tell me whether the science facts I give you are true or false. If they then turn out to be true, Oliver will let us know by doing this. <laughs> and if they're false, he'll do this. Here's how we play the game. Set of three red lights for each team. Every time you answer a question correctly, we'll turn one of your lights green. The first team to get all three lights lit green wins the game, takes a point, and we move on. But if you answer a question incorrectly, we will turn one of the other team's lights green. So think very carefully about how you answer, because you could win the game for the other team if you're not careful. Everybody clear on the rules? Good. The first question is the nearest team question. Here is your question. The number called a Google is one followed by how many zeros? So the number called a Google is one, followed by how many zeros? Five. Got to hurry for an answer now, team. Three, two, one. Time's up. OK, I do need answers. Have both teams written down an answer? Reds, have you written down an answer? Yellows, have you written down an answer? OK. The number called a Google is one followed by how many zeros? Reds, what do you think? 13. You think it's one, then 13 zeros? Yeah. Yellows? A thousand. A thousand zeros. OK, that's... Whew. Some difference in your answers there. The actual answer is a Google is a one followed by 100 zeros, which means the reds are closest with 13. The green light is the next one. Right, let's ask the question of Red. You get the first true or false. You've taken control of the game, that's good. You could, of course, lose control fairly quickly, get this wrong, hand the green light to the yellows, then next question they get to. So, your science fact is... The longest ear hair in the world is 10 centimetres long. Is that true or false? Have a chat, Reds, have a good think. What do you think? Is it true or false? We think it's false because we think it might be longer. Really? Yeah. That's a confident answer from the Reds. OK, so, Oliver, the science fact is the longest ear hair in the world is 10 centimetres long. The Reds think it's false. Is it true or false? <laughs> it is false. That means another light is lit green for the Reds. Actually, you are right, it's actually over 18 centimetres long. And it belongs to Anthony Victor of India. Right, yellows. The reds have two green lights. Here is your science fact. The box jellyfish has enough poison in it to kill 60 human beings. True or false? The box jellyfish has enough poison in it to kill 60 human beings. Is that true or false? Have a good think in the chat. Meanwhile, audience, what do you think? Vote with your feet. Is it true or false? <laughs> OK, you all think that's true? No? Yep. You think not? No. I've seen a jellyfish, but yeah. I've never been stung by one, but I still don't think it could be that poisonous. OK, well, back to your places, audience. Let's find out the real answer. The box jellyfish has enough poison in it to kill 60 human beings. Is that true or false? True. You think it's true? Oliver, the yellows think it's true. Is it true or false? <laughs> it is true! It's still in the game. Well done. Good. It is true. That's a green light lit. It does live in Australia. In the sea, obviously, around Australia. It's also known as the sea wasp. OK. Reds. So, the yellows have stayed in the game. By the skin of their teeth, well done, team. This is a critical one for you. You get this right, you win. You get it wrong, the yellows will then have two lights lit green and they can win on their next question. Out of all the planets in the solar system, Jupiter 
has the fewest moons. True or false? Right, what do you think? False. false. You think it's false? Because yeah. we think every planet has a moon and Earth only has one, so that must be the... Logical thinking going on there. OK. Out of all the planets in the solar system, Jupiter has the fewest moons. Oliver, is that true or false? <laughs> It is false, it is false, that means the third light is lit. Green for the Reds. <laughs> Jupiter, in fact, has the most moons, 62, although only 49 have official names. Well, I'm not surprised, you're not going to remember them all, are you? With three lights lit green, that means the Reds win. The score, then, is 1-0. <laughs> Sometimes it does get very lonely here in the lab. When you lot have all gone home and I'm the only human here, lab rats don't count, obviously, or gnomes. So I invented a time machine to bring my old science teacher back from school through time to help out in the lab and keep me company. And it worked. The machine worked. She arrived. And she's just not much company, cos all she ever does is keep reminding me that I had the time machine's anti-ageing dial turned up way too high, which is why she stepped out of it as a ten-year-old girl. It is, of course, Minnie Miss! <laughs> Hello. What are you drivelling on about, Richard? May I remind you of the time you had the anti-ageing dial turned up way too high? Yes, and... Miss, all right, I've got it. I'm sorry it won't happen again. It is better not. All right. So what have you got for us today? Well, today, the teams are playing a game I like to call... Whoa! Well, anything that involves suspending lab rats from the ceiling is good with me, Miss. Yeah. Pipe down and listen up, Richard. Sorry, sorry. The teams have to use their colander catapult launchers to fire these Velcro-covered balls at their very own lab rat. If the ball hits, it will stick. OK, and I'll bet that the team with the most of those Velcro-covered balls stuck to their lab rat wins! Correct! Yeah! I'm getting really good at these now. Teams, you have some time to get as many balls stuck to your lab rat as you can. Think carefully about trajectory, the path it's taking, and power. How much energy you're giving it to get there, OK? That's some time, if you're ready. You ready? That some time starts now! So, away we go, and both teams off to a good start, already sticking balls to those idiot lab rats. That's good, because no one knows how long some time is. The yellows look to be ahead, and yes, there's another point for them. The reds need to catch up, but not with firing like that. Oh, and yet another one for the yellows. And another one. Headshot, absolutely classic move. To talk science, Minimis has joined you. Miss? Yes, Technically, Richard. do we need these clever microphones that we don't need? No, them? Richard. But they look good, don't they? Yes, Richard. We look they like do. sports commentators. Shut yeah. up, Richard. OK, Miss. This game is all about energy transfer, isn't it? Because right, energy Richard. can never be made or destroyed. It just changes from one form to another. So as the teams pull back their colanders, energy is transferred from their arms into the bungees, the stretchy bits, where it's stored, and that's where it's potential, potential, energy. potential energy. Yeah. As soon as the collar is let go, this potential, potential energy, energy is transferred into movement or kinetic. kinetic energy. That shoots the colander with the ball inside forwards. The colanders and the bungees are attached to the posts, so they get pulled back again. They stop, but the balls aren't, so they fly forwards, hopefully, towards the lab rats. Correct, Richard. Thank you, Miss. Right, while I've been chatting to Minimis, the Reds have really come back into this one. It's too close to call. Five, four, That was a close one for you, Reds, that really was. So, lab rat, for the yellows, how many do we have? Ten. Fourteen. Fourteen for the yellows. For the reds, what have we got? Ten. Thirteen. That means it did a win for the yellows. There we go. That was a close one thing, too. Very close. Looking at those wimpy lab rats up there makes me think that they could do with a little bit of toughening up. It'd be good for them. <laughs> 
Fed up with having no one she can trust to help with security at the lab, Ninja Nan has sent one of our lab rats to toughen up. This particular lab rat, Rattiest Play, says he's the toughest, meanest, baddest lab rat of all time, ever. Well, let's put that to the test and crowbar in an excuse for an experiment at the same time. And his opponent today, the inanimate object better known as a freestanding punch bag, the base of which is heavily weighted down with 100 kilograms of sand. The challenge we're setting Rattius, can he knock the punch bag down using only his fists? This is all about the punch bag's centre of gravity and the width of its base. For our punch bag to keep upright, its centre of gravity must stay directly above its base. If the top of the punch bag can be pushed sideways enough for its centre of gravity to reach past its base, then gravity can take control and topple the punch bag. Round one begins. He's showing no mercy, unleashing a flurry of devastating blows. Doesn't seem to be having much of an effect, though, with the punch bag laughing at his pathetic pugilistic skills. He's floundering. He's run out of time and the punch bag is still standing. Oh, hold on, I spoke too soon. He's thought of another way to knock it down. Wind power. More his style. This huge electric fan is capable of blasting a constant stream of air at speeds of up to 110 miles an hour. But will that be enough to finally topple the sleeping behemoth that is the freestanding punch bag? Well, some wobbling there, but it's not looking good. Time's up, and another victory for the punch bag. Is there no one who can challenge this silent giant of the boxing world? Well, what are the chances? A fireman? That could work. So, can our fireman succeed where the other two methods have failed? He has a hose connected to a fire hydrant that can shoot out up to 475 litres a minute. But will this be enough to knock down the punch bag? So, hold the experiment right there. There's another point up for grabs for the teams. Once again, it's transfer of energy. Energy being put into the bag and failing to knock it over. Punch power wasn't enough. We saw wind power wasn't enough. Will water power do it? Will that be able to knock the punch bag over? You have a think about it, teams, because there's another point up for grabs right now. Meanwhile, while you're thinking, we're going to go over to the audience. Really have a good chat, because you never know. Have a proper chat about anything you can. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, audience, what do you reckon? Well, I think the water power might work. You think it might? Yeah. It obviously takes quite a lot of energy to knock the bag over, doesn't it? It looks pretty heavy. Yeah, I think it... Maybe knock it down, but it depends how fast it pushes out. And how do you think the bag's staying up? What's holding it up, do you think? Um, the, the sand must be so heavy that it won't be pushed so down. So because it's weighted at the bottom, yeah. that kind of all the, all the, the centre of gravity, for like the heavy bit of it, is down at the bottom. Good, good, good. Right then, teams. Yellows, what do you think? Will water power do it? We think it will. You think it will? Reds. Yeah, I think it, yes, what are you going for? You're going for yes. You're going for yes. Both teams are going for yes. I know what we're to find out. On with the experiment. After watching this man embarrass himself on more than one occasion, this man thinks he can finally topple the freestanding punch bag using water power. Let's find out if he's right. Three, two, one, fire! And with the greatest of ease and a whole lot of water, the punch bag is finally knocked to the ground. It's a knockout. Water power was enough. It did it. That means both teams are right. It's an extra point to both teams. Means it's now two all. <laughs> OK, team, if you'd like to go and get changed into chemical protective suits, away you go. I don't think that lab rat boxer took his defeat at the hands of Mother Nature very well. With the punch bag well and truly beaten, our brave loser Rattius comes in to offer his condolences. It's not very sporty. Nor is that, but it's very funny. Rattius once more flailing his arms, but to no effect. So, there you have it. If you
you want to look at a lab rat and you've got a choice between a water cannon and a wind machine, use a water cannon. Unless you have neither, in which case, use the old-fashioned boxing glove. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> There's another one, look. <laughs> oh, what a simple but effective tool. Uh, never fails. Right, don't worry, they're lab rats. They're designed for that sort of thing. Anyway, let's move on to something far more important. It is time for... <laughs> This is my bungee-powered catapult. I invented it to investigate if the Blast Lab cat could beat a cheetah in a 100-metre race. It did. It might have taken an unfortunate route, cut through a wall or two, but, you know, it still beat the cheetah. That was the important thing. Anyway, this week's moggy, moggy mess... I mean, messy, messy mess test is the Gungy Bungee. Teams, you've got to use these catapults to fire prize pods over this tank and into the prize zone on the other side. It's as simple as that. The prizes up for grabs today, represented by what's written on the prize pods, include a volcano game, a fashion styling set, and a marine copter. But there's a catch. Well, technically, it's a catcher. Because each team has a team member standing in the tank. Your job is to intercept the other team's prize pods as they arc gracefully across the tank towards the prize zone. OK? Don't forget, each team has the option at any time to fire these to their teammates. These are... Giant Hands of Glory. That wasn't, no. Yeah. These can be used to stop the opposing team's prize pods more effectively than if they just use their own bare hands. But, of course, when you're firing one of these across, you could actually be firing a prize pod across instead. So it's down to you to work out your tactics on that one. Deploy them carefully. Remember, only the prize pods that end up in the prize zone at the end of the game count. The team with the most prize pods wins. That's right, you have some time to get as many prize pods across the tank and into the prize zone as you possibly can. Your some time starts right about now. As it's a draw, both teams are kicking off at the same time and the teams are wasting no some time. Yellows are off the mark. And another, John the Firer for the Yellows is like a machine out there. <laughs> Speaking of machines, that's Alan, my massive robot who has the most colossal cold. Sorry, everyone. The blockers did well to get out of the way of that one. Oh, but a great block from Izzy. The Reds need more of that if they want to get back in this game. And finally, the Reds get their first prize pod into the prize zone. And another. Is this the start of a great comeback? It could be. Callum has got his eye in now. Look out the yellows. Oh, well, it really is anybody's game now. There is nothing separating these two sides. The blockers are working overtime. But the reds grab another. And again, back come the yellows. I've never seen a messy, messy mess test like it. The teams are going to have to be quick Five, now. Four, three, two, one. That is the end of the game. Time for the big totter. I think some of the teams have been doing their own, but let's check with the lab rats. For the yellows, indicate with your little paw, hold it in the air. Five for the reds. What have we got? Four for the Reds, that means it is a yellow victory! The yellows win! Well done, yellows. Right, let's see what you've won. Are you ready, Ninja now? A radio-controlled spider. A moon of doom. A butterfly gun. Transforming ball. And flying UFO. That is the Hall of Prizes that the yellow team will be taking home from the lab. Reds, um, out of interest, we should probably find out what you would have won had you won. Each of you would have been taking home a transforming ball for each of you. That would be nice. A butterfly garden for each of you. A board game for each of you. A volcano game. Yeah. But here at Blast Lab, there are only three rules. Last person out of the lab has to turn out the lights, never, ever open the windows as the killer moles get in, and the losing team has to blow up their prizes. That third rule is the most important one right now because it's time for B-Day Goes Bang! <laughs> Well 
played all of these coming home with you. That feels good. Reds, you did so well. You, you held it at a draw through most of the game, and in the end, you, you, you didn't do the winning thing, you did the losing thing instead. But it's OK, because instead of taking home a huge wheelbarrow full of prizes, you're going to follow me now on a long and treacherous walk of shame. Follow me. Yeah. Console them, for they are sad. They are sad. Console them. Lisa, in the end, the gungee bungee just didn't go your way, did it? Bad luck. Still, at least you get to bl blow everything up in the end. Yeah? You know what to do? Lift the plunge, please. Audience, we'll count them down. From five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Yeah. Today, we have used giant wind machines and fire engines to investigate balance and catapults and to learn that, unlike lab rats, energy can't be destroyed. See you next time. CBBC. Friday download. Friday at six.